Well, hey there, rock stars. Sarah Rack and Robbins here, author of the best selling book, Rock Your Network Marketing Business, and creator of the Network Marketing Inner Circle.com. I'm so excited to be with you today. Um, today is Monday, my favorite day, because we just met with our Network Marketing Inner Circle. And we talked about belief and believing that there is so much in store for us. And here's the thing, I can't share with you that whole training because that is exclusively for members of our inner circle. So while I'm not going to touch on the um, skill set piece, I wanted to, felt just strongly impressed to talk to all of you to just share with you simply the mindset piece that we talked a little bit about today. My question for you is, do you believe that there's more in store for you, for you, for your family, for your business, even for your company, for your industry? Today, we're going to talk about keys to enlarging your vision, which will accelerate your, your results. And it doesn't matter what type of business you're in. It's not just network marketing, direct sales. It is for everybody. Okay, so before we get started today, let's quickly get acquainted. Why don't you shout out below who you are, where you're tuning in from, what kind of business you have. Don't mention company names, please. So for example, if you have a media company, go ahead and share that. If you're in network marketing, go ahead and share that. And as you introduce yourself, I'll quickly introduce myself. Who am I? I am Sarah Robbins. I'm a former kindergarten teacher turned one of network marketing's top global leaders. Together with our team, we've built a billion dollar sales team and I share my best practices in my best selling book, Rock Your Network Marketing Business. And I do weekly coaching to build a successful network marketing business in the network marketing inner circle. You can check it out at the networkmarketinginnercircle.com. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Mondays are my favorite days because we meet with our inner circle and um, while I can't go into the skill set piece because that's um, just specifically um, meant for them, we talked about enlarging your business today. I just felt strongly impressed to talk to you about the enlarging your mindset piece. I feel like specifically there's somebody who needs to hear this message today. Today on the skill set piece, we talked about how there is so much more in store. What are you believing for? You know, so many people hear our story and they see your success and they say, Sarah, did you dream it? And the truth is I couldn't have dreamed this up. I went from being a shy young kindergarten teacher to building a sales team that does over a billion dollars in sales every single year. Did I dream it? No, but here's the truth. I never even knew that it was possible. My story is I was a teacher living on a $2,200 per month salary, um, and I supplemented my income through both nannying, so doing that part-time, caring for kids, and also freelancing, doing events for different skincare and cosmetics companies. And I remember when I was really limited by my thinking, but it was limited by my you know, current circumstance. I was babysitting this house, which is modest price homes, and I remember driving through this neighborhood, and these were new homes that were built, and I just thought, gosh, I will never be able to live in one of these homes. I will never be able to afford one of these homes. I thought that I had my path all mapped out, and really, I was capped out based on my own circumstances, my thinking, what I logically thought was possible. Now, thankfully, I found my network marketing business while I was freelancing. I started working for this company to make some extra income. And one day we got a call. They said, hey, good news and bad news. Bad news, you're going to lose your freelancing job. But the good news is we have another opportunity for you. We're leaving retail. We're going into direct sales. Do you want to do this? And so I started like most people do, just very part-time alongside of my full-time job, all of my commitments in my life. And I started selling the product, which allowed me to supplement my income. I remember hitting a turning point in the business where things really started to expanding and I started to see some incredible growth. And consistently, I was replacing and then surpassing my teaching income. And <clears throat> my husband and I, we were living in our, our first home at the time, a very modest, modest price home, and we were taking a walk. And I remember talking about taking that leap of faith and leaving my teaching job and pursuing the plan B that would later turn into a plan A for me. Now, it was crazy because I was scared. My husband was, and he was like, you've got this. There's so much more in store for you. I know that if you put your mind to it, there's nothing that you can't do. Now, keep in mind, wisdom, we didn't just leave a job until we were consistently surpassing 
our current income, okay? So I'm not suggesting anybody goes and, and does that by any means. Um, but I remember telling our um, principal, the school board, they thought I was crazy. I interviewed against 1,100 people to get that job. And in fact, one of the um, parents in our kindergarten class her, class, her husband was on the school board, they thought about doing an intervention with me, okay? Later, she actually joined my business and is a top le uh, leader on my team. But what happened thereafter was incredible. Our team started exploding and expanding. And um, I always say, you know, blessings are tied to our obedience. I took that leap of faith. I stepped out of complacency, out of my comfort zone, into the unknown. And that's when things really took off for me. I was traveling more. I was training more. I was doing the things that continue to expand and to grow my business. And here's the crazy thing, guys. I went from thinking that I would never have a nice home to gifting our very first home, our starter home, to a family in need. And it's such a cool story. When we were moving out of that home into one of our dream homes in Michigan, um, there was a car that just happened to be driving by. And it happened so quick that um, we didn't even put the house up for sale. My husband tells the story in his book, The Secret Garage. And it's such a powerful book. I recommend every business owner gets it. I don't care what business you're in, The Secret Garage. It is powerful, really spiritual success principles to accelerate your life and business. And this couple's driving by and they're like, hey, are you selling your home? We're looking in the neighborhood and we're like, well, we didn't know if we want to sell or rent, but you know, I guess. And they ended up renting from us for several years and they were so faithful. He had a debilitating illness. The wife was working hard to make ends meet and they were so faithful and caring for our home. Well, long story short, they ended up renting. And one day, several years later, my husband and I were talking and I was like, hey, I put something on my heart. And he's like, me too. You go first. And I shared, hey, we're to gift that first home to this family. They've been so faithful. And he was like, get out of town. I've been feeling the same thing. So we called him around Christmas time. I'll never forget and said, the house is yours. So isn't that crazy? We went from thinking we would never have a nice home. And by the way, people told us to foreclose on that first home because of what happened in Michigan's economy. All the homes were upside down. And um, we were in a crazy mortgage at the time because we had, hadn't even found our business yet. Um, <clears throat> families were moving, schools were closing, Motown, Motor City, you know what happened in the downturn of the economy with the automotive industry. So we went from having, thinking we would never have a nice home to gifting our starter home to a deserving family. I love when God turns our trials into a testimony, our burdens into a blessing. And then of course, to then go on and build homes for children overseas through the orphanages that we fund. You see you guys, here's the thing, blessings are tied to your obedience. But you have to first be obedient, and you must believe that there is more in store for you and for your family. There was so much more in store for us. I believe there's more in store for each and every one of you that are listening today. But are you willing to move out of the camp of complacency away from your comfort zone into the unknown? Do you believe there's more in store for you? So sharing this story with our Inner Circle members today, and again, and I can only share with you the mindset piece because they are a part of that program. So we talked about you know, enlarging our business on the skill set piece, but we were talking about our belief, and we told the story about the little frog who was at the bottom of a small well on a farm. He and his family lived there. He was content to play there. He swam around all day. He just thought, you know, life doesn't get better than this. It's, I have exactly what I need. And how many of you are feeling that way? You know what? If things are good. Like, I'm just happy. I can pay my bills. I'm good. But did you ever think maybe there's, not, there's more in store for you? And maybe through the people that you'll bless with the success that's been given to you. I want you to really think about that. Not only are our blessings tied to our obedience, other people's are too. So one day he looks up. He sees the top of the well, he becomes curious, and he's like, what's up there? And he climbs to the top, and he looks over the edge, and lo and behold, he sees a pond. It was a thousand times bigger. So he couldn't believe it. It was a thousand times bigger than the well. He ventured further. He discovered a lake. He stood there, and he was absolutely amazed. And then he hopped a long way, and he came to an ocean. And everywhere he looked, all he could see was water. He was shocked beyond measure. He realized how limited his thinking was. It was based on what he knew, what he could see, his own surroundings. How many of us are limiting ourselves based on what we know? That's complacency, right? And I always say, 
unrecognized complacency eventually leads to decline. He thought he had it all back in the well, but really all he had was a drop in the bucket compared to the life that he could enjoy. The dream for your life, guys, it is bigger than you can imagine. If you were to see everything that was in store for you, I think God doesn't show it to us right away because it would just boggle our mind. But here's the thing. It's like the Moses and the Israelite story. They had a promised land. They had a promise, something that was promised to them, but most of them didn't make it despite the provision, despite the, the protection, right? They were just focused on what they knew, not what was ahead. So, so many times we're like that little frog. We're enclosed in that well. It's our comfortable environment. It's how we were raised. It's what we know. It's a certain way of living, a certain way that we've been thinking but there's so much more in store for us today. So I wanna encourage you guys today, if you're in business, if you're anywhere you are in your life today, even in your career or in your job, to dust off that dream board, revisit your why, why you're doing what you're doing. You know, what does the extra time and finances mean? How will you live? How will you give? Encourage you to go a bit further than you've gone before. Dare to dream big and look over that edge and remember there are oceans for you to enjoy. I want you to think about your why, you know, why you're doing what you're doing. It is so unique to you. For me, it's building orphanages overseas, funding um, children's education programs here and abroad. And that is so unique to me. You might say yours is um, international adoptions. Why is yours different than mine? I believe God gives each and every one of us a unique gift. So if he gives it to us, why wouldn't he give us the provision, right? He brings opportunities across our path. He, get, he introduces us to the right people. If you step out boldly in faith and expect the best and move forward with confidence and obedience, knowing that you're well able to do the thing that he called you to do, imagine what could happen to your life. Or will you shrink back in fear and just say, oh, that's too big for me. It's like Joshua and Caleb, right? They go into the land and, they're, and, and the other spies are like, oh my goodness. You know, these giants, they're so big. It's different than what I know. They shrink back in fear, but not the two. They went two out of a million who inherited the promise. You know, so you are you saying it's too big for me? There's giants over there. I'm not qualified. I can't do that. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. He's looking for somebody who's willing and able and obedient. That's it. Why in the heck else would he use a shy kindergarten teacher in her 20s with no network. My network was young and broke like me. It's because I was obedient. I was willing to do the work. And here's the thing. I've been able to be a blessing to so many others through what I offer, through my opportunity, my product, but also through the success that we've had, it's allowed me to do so much more. Now I change children's lives on even a grander scale through what we do and how we give. There's so much more in store for you today, but you've got to do your part. You're going to have to get outside of that little box and start thinking big today. You know, um, many people settle for too little. I've gone as far as my education or experience will let me go. Ha! Huh. I was a shy, young, broke kindergarten teacher when I started doing this. Or I've gone as far in my career or business that I can go. I've hit the peak. I'm never going to make any more money than I am right now. Your job is not your source. God is your source. His creativity and resources are unlimited. I even heard somebody, and I believe their intentions were good, talking about you know caps on an industry or um, certain seasons or you know in a company. I'm sitting here going, our greatest days are ahead. We are not limited by what we know or by what we see. But we have to stir ourselves up, step out of complacency, and not being satisfied with past glories. So I want to encourage you guys today. Like I said, we met with our inner circle today. We talked about the skill set piece of enlarging your vision. I just wanted to share with you the mindset piece. I just felt like somebody needed to be blessed by this. There's so much more in store for you. But here's the thing. It starts in your mind. The battle's in your mind. You have to believe for bigger things. You need to start affirming and speaking the things that you're hoping to see over yourself, over your business, over your company, over your industry. You'll have to break past some past barriers and enlarge your thinking because here's the thing I know for sure. You will become what you believe, good or bad. You will become what you believe. All right, guys, if you know somebody who could be blessed by this, click the share button right now or you can share it on your page for a little 
watch party. I hope this blessed you guys today. And um, I just want to wish you a great week. God bless. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.